<laughs> oh, Frank, this is quite ridiculous, mate. Well done. Yeah, well, I'm a bit surprised <laughs> too. Man. Blow my mind. So uh, first of all, welcome to our new race car. In a minute, when I say our, uh, I'm gonna uh, introduce you to uh, my co-driver for the year, Miles Lacey, who's our pro driver this year. But first of all, let me introduce you to Frank Flippin Stephenson. <laughs> I say it like that because I've basically grown up a fan of Frank's work. Um, I wanna set a bit of context to this man here. For those of you who don't know, you'll definitely be familiar with the McLaren P1, uh, the Maserati MC12, the new Mini, the new Fiat 500, mm. Whaletail, Cozzy. Yep. Anything else? Of Ferrari F430? Uh, F430, FXX. Uh, oh, well, FXX. Yeah. Did you pen that? Uh, yes. Yeah, so yeah. Frank is the designer of the cars that I just mentioned. And today, both myself and Miles, mm. who we'll bring in shortly, are absolutely blown away and honored in equal measure that we will effectively be racing a Frank Stephenson designed mm -hmm. Praga in the uh, Brit Car Endurance Championship this year. And I still, I say this every now and again on this channel, I can't believe the words that are leaving my mouth, but never did I expect that sentence to become tangible. Frank, thank you so much for putting your time into this. Today is about really introducing the livery but also the intricate story about it, because it's not just a good looking car, you've put a lot of thought into this, haven't you? Yeah, we have, James. <clears throat> Thanks of all for, uh, most of all for inviting me down and uh, having a good look at it too, because you know these things are born in your mind, you can visualize them as a designer, but at some point that visualization has to become 3D, right? So there's a process between that, that spark of creativity, as we call it, to actually seeing it like this. And again, when you see your baby in real life, in front of you, it, uh -huh. it blows my mind all the time too. <laughs> yeah. um, but no, it's uh, it's a real real special occasion, obviously, because there is a thought process behind the livery. Um, this is a very special car, so a lot of extra thought went into it. We didn't have a heck of a lot of time, as usual. You know, these projects are like bam, bam, bam. Yes. And you typically have to go with your gut feeling what's going to work on the car. But we did have to explore a few themes very quickly to get sort of that feeling of what works with the car and what doesn't work. And when we start out on projects like this, you know, it's not, it's, there's no use in just doing another livery. Mm -hmm. You want it to really stand out and really become, you know, if you can't predict if it's going to become iconic or not, that takes time and, you know, a lot of people have to give their opinion on that. But if you can design it with that fact in mind that you want this car to look good forever, not really age in terms of what it looks like, because uh -huh. the car itself, let's face it, it's as you know, downforce, aerodynamics, <laughs> yeah. shrink wrap, performance design, weight, everything is in this car here. So it's, it's not gonna be easy for this car to look old anytime soon. <laughs> so yeah. it's, but again, that, that graphic livery of it has to kind of reflect the values of the car. Uh -huh. And so we went at it in, in a number of ways. We really had to look at color combinations, where the colors work, where they don't work. Um, the last thing you wanna do is stick decals on it that later represent the sponsors, but you have to do that have that in mind also from the onset but yeah it's been a, a real experience you know I, I don't typically do graphics but I have a, a feeling for them and mm -hmm. I think if you look at this car uh, compared to the other cars that are going to be on the grid it's certainly going to stand out <laughs> it I is mean. yeah a bit of info on the car and I think it will tie in quite nicely with the design flow of the livery which Frank has made is the car is capable of, of uh, a thousand kilograms of downforce once you understand that this is quite a heavy aero car it mm. makes a lot more sense as to why your your sort of airflow design makes part of the car yeah it accentuates it, yeah. it actually emphasizes a little bit yeah, there's, there's that. And again, you know, if you recall the, uh, the most famous liveries ever in the history of automotive racing, there, mm -hmm. there are a few good ones that really stand out, namely... <clears throat> the Gulf. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but also, if you look into stock cars, you know, NASCAR racing, sure. and Can-Am racing, all those kind of cars have liveries that really... In martinis, remember yeah, that? that yeah. Livery? And that's um, psychedelic, 917, yeah. Yeah, so you try so. to come up with something that's, you know, they're, what they all have in common is they're unique. Mm -hmm. None of them are really reputable and, and you don't see, you know, like another car that kind of looks like it. They're all very, very strongly identifiable. So I think that was one of the objectives we tried to achieve is, is have something that when you look at it, instantly it stays in your mind. You understand it. You don't have to figure it out. Sure. You know, that's yeah. too much work for people to try to figure <laughs> out what are they trying to communicate with the livery design. And in modern liveries where you start to do almost you know, graphics that just sort of don't even work with the car, but they look awesome, sort of like uh -huh. graffiti or something. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It might look good on an on a unmoving object, mm -hmm. but on an object like this that's at speed most of the time, you want to be able to capture that livery, that look, 
even at speed. And a lot of graphics don't do that. Livers don't do that. You, you see them when they're stopped and you say, okay, now I, yes. I get it. But with this one, it was creating um, a flow, uh -huh. literally a flow and, and no pun intended, but yes. the, the flow is in the sense of also of the brand itself because Praga goes back you know, over a hundred years. I think it's close to 110 years. And so if you take that as your starting point and people think 110 years ago, my gosh, were we even, you know, what, what cars existed back then? Uh -huh. Well, Praga was in there, but um, it's not one of those brands that really in your mind, is it? But they've stayed in the business long enough that what I wanted to do is try to create something that captured that, that flow of evolution of Praga itself. And um, there are enough points in Praga's history that you can capitalize on that. First and foremost, the origin, you know, it's in Czech Republic today, Czechoslovakia yeah. before. Yeah. Um, so there's the national colors that we were exploring, the, the flag, there's the white, blue, and red. Um, the, obviously, the, the, the logo of Praga is the most important, you know, sacrosanct part of the design of, yes. of Praga is uh, communicating the, the logo first and foremost and putting it in probably in the most prominent area of a car, right, and, you know, smack on the nose. I cone. mean, it's a really r regal symbol, isn't it? It that, is, you know? yeah. Yeah, you almost don't want to touch it because a lot of times, you know, designers look at it and go, you know, what a huge contrast between a modern uh -huh. or, or cutting-edge race vehicle and having such a traditional, almost uh, not even antique, but just older type yeah. looking logo of, a, of the brand on there. But I think that is pretty powerful. That contrast is, is something to play up, yeah. right? Yeah. So the more we can actually contrast the design of the car with the logo, um, I, think, I think that's a plus point. The intricacy towards the back, some poor guy called Jan, <laughs> yeah. who if you're watching this Jan, thank you so much for your dedication to this. <laughs> yeah. The wrap is one of the most complicated wraps I think I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, we'll highlight to you some of the detailing. For example, these black contrasting stripes here on the, I guess we would call it gold cap, Mm -hmm. These these aren't part of the good. These aren't printed. These are all hand laid, mm -hmm. and the taper. I mean, Frank, you said earlier that yeah. is less than one mil. Yep. Here. Yeah, yeah. It's the same hand laid line that goes all the way back. Look at that. Yeah, it's, it's very precise. Absolutely amazing. Jan is a perfectionist. You can just yeah, you don't even have to meet him. You know he's a perfectionist when you look at his work. So yeah, it's it's awesome to work with people who think like that. I mean, Jan was pushing me, and I thought, you know. I, I'm as crazy as it comes to, to detail, and he was pushing me to get it even more exact. So yeah. um, it's nice to have work with people who are at the, you know, the very cutting edge of their profession, very, very edge of what, what people normally would do to, sure. to do something like that. So shall we spin it, and then we'll, yeah. we'll have a chat about the rear, because the rear, I mean, on an, on an aero car, as it were, is kind of the business end, or almost. Yeah. And there's an interesting thing which I didn't even know, which is this symbol here. That, that harks back to the early days of, of uh, yeah, Praga, right? Uh, yeah, on the fin in the back, we yes. have the uh, Genius of Victory, which is very, very unique for Praga. It's in their history, a sculpture that was created back in the early so 1900s. This, this strange yeah. abstract shape here. Well, it might not make sense until you get a bit of explanation. It's basically yeah. a man running. He's got a wreath in his hand. I see, okay. And uh, he's in total front, you know, cheetah-like yeah. pose. Uh -huh. And uh, so we capitalize on that. Suddenly, we put a drop shadow okay, on it, it really so you can bring it, it out and make it look less flat, a bit more 3D. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, to get that, when I was telling you earlier, I was trying to get that feeling that the graphic is actually moving along the car. Hmm. That was like, how do you show, you know, the colors of the car and still get that movement? And the best thing to do is, is to emphasize the movement of the air around the body itself when the vehicle itself is supposed to be designed to, to be very good at moving through air, basically, uh -huh. you know? Yeah. So, if you stood this car in the wind tunnel and ran one of those tubes of vapor across it, yes. you'd see a, a pretty accurate flow line of what you see here mimicked with the stripes. And obviously that's, that's the big part of the design. So that white, blue, uh -huh. or blue, white, however you want to see it, yes. combination just comes through here. And we tried to keep it sort of based to a certain point because below that, if we would have gone even lower, mm -hmm. what happens is the car looks heavier. So if you bring the body color all the way down, to the plates on the bottom here, then you would sort of have a very heavy looking vehicle. And by making it look light, the car is super light, you know the weight. Yeah, it's 640 kilograms. Right, yeah. So, so just quickly for some, anyone who's out there with familiar to like power to weight and downforce, mm. etc., we are running a, a four cylinder Renault Sport engine. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's around about 640 kilograms, capable of a thousand kilograms of downforce. And it's like sort of 
peak map, it's 380 horsepower. Yeah. Um, and we'll, we'll speak to Miles shortly about how this thing drives. He's had a bit more seat time in it than myself, but we both shared a drive at Donington a few days ago. It recalibrated my mind. Because mm -hmm. I'm from fairly new, really, to the world of downforce. Um, mm -hmm. And I think having felt that now, what this livery does to represent that, mm -hmm. it, I mm -hmm. mean, it, you know, if anyone's felt a pretty decent handling track day car, like a, mm -hmm. a GT3 or something like that, you can take the grip levels and to turn it up to 10, 11, mm. and that's the, the amount more available you've grip with, yeah. you've, you've got with slicks and downforce. So. Yeah, you've Very got cool. to readjust your, your basic, uh, you know, pulls for braking and <laughs> yeah. acceleration. It's just beyond, I mean, yeah. I've seen the car on track and I just think, you know, you can't be normal and drive a car like this. You have to- you know, <laughs> Slightly unhinged. <laughs> very unhinged probably. But I think it, uh, again, the, um, the graphics do give it that sensation of speed. Mm -hmm. And we've typically, or, or, or objectively, or whatever you want to say, yeah. not, carbon, not, not completed the carbon with a wrap because that shows the actual material of the vehicle. Yes. Just the whole display of the carbon nose cone oh is gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Well, carbon is an exotic material, yeah. so you want to highlight it in, in certain ways. But we did do that with, uh, especially the gold roof. People might be asking why it's gold. Well, there's a lot of history with gold in, mm -hmm. in, in the past with being a very exotic and expensive element. Of course, yes. race cars are expensive. Yep. And we use gold oftentimes for um, heat, for the uh, control of the heat on the vehicle uh -huh. to keep the temperatures down. And so it, being an exotic element, we wanted to highlight that. We've kept this, this canopy feature really flowing through the side of the car, so you really get the sensation of almost a very fast visor uh -huh. or yes. you know, jet yeah. fuselage canopy yeah. kind of thing. That works really well, obviously. That's carbon fiber, and you have your numbers and things there. Very cool. Right, let's bring around mm. the full back shot because the business end is the diffuser end. Yeah. Uh, it's aggressive around here. And you've also put some, some nice some nice hashtag there for us to uh, yeah, intimidate yeah. anyone behind us. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Well, okay, so as we come around to the rear, you can see how the flow lines start to dissipate, dissipate and sort of break up and, yes. you know, uh, that's what happens with air, basically. You try to keep it attached to the surface uh -huh. and you try to manage the air. So in the areas where you start to get a little bit of less contact patches of air with the body, you can start to break up the lines. And that really gives a sensation of the line actually being organic and, and dynamic at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then obviously it picks up again on the rear spoiler, you get a nice patch of blue that dissipates and, and becomes a little bit uh, uncluttered. It's the or, most bonkers wrap. Yeah, yeah, it works really <laughs> it's well. It's really, really crazy. And after you get past that point, there's nothing really much more that you really do want to wrap because like you said, that's the business end and uh -huh. we call it the money shot because it actually is, you know, makes the car look like it's uh, designed with purpose in mind. But um, yeah, so if you look at the rear of the car, you see the hashtag winning instinct. You get that as a, you know, a congratulations that you're behind the car kind of thing. And, <laughs> yeah, remember, it's all about winning. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Well. Honestly, up until this point, Top Gear put it out on their website last night. That was the first time that I really saw it. I was like, yeah. that can't be our car. I don't, it, it is our <laughs> car, but I was like, there's no way that's our yeah. car. So that was the first time I really saw it. But it's uh, unlike lots of cars, the cameras or the photos or whatever it is, it just doesn't do the sculpture of these things mm. justice to see it in person. So I'm hoping the UK audience manages to follow Brick Car and come down to some races because i'd really like them to see this in the pits or the mm. paddock or on on track it would be really cool yeah i remember when we went on telephone we had our chat about yeah. about the graphics itself yeah, yeah. and you're a little bit hesitant yeah you're like, yeah it sounds like it could work but not sure if it's gonna... <laughs> and then when you see it you're like yeah. wow <laughs> yeah it's, a, it's always a good payoff when you finally see it in 3d but again it's a it's a great team of guys working to make a, a yeah. vision reality it's always that way yeah, you, know, you can draw cool. something absolutely stunning but Practically, you never know if it's going to work. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's come out brilliant. absolutely amazing. Well, seriously, thank thank you so much for it, and I hope you can make it down to a race Would or love two. To. Would That'd love be awesome. to. Yeah, yeah see absolutely. it flying around. Well, I want to see it after the race when it really looks like it's been used. <laughs> yeah, you know, hopefully that's, not too that's used. The... I don't want to be the guy that's like, guys, we're going to have to rewrap one of Frank's panels. Well, it's okay. <laughs> you know? It's okay. That's what they're there for. <laughs> no, no, honestly, mate, it's been brilliant. Thank you. Thanks so much. Pleasure. Cheers. Pleasure. All right, here's Miles. Hey James. Dude, how excited are we? Only a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Only a little bit. Um, so I love using this terminology on 
the channel, but for a spot of context, Miles is our pro driver. Uh, he's uh, here representing Supercar Driver. Uh, the, the link to those guys is in the description below. Uh, but Miles has been a factory pro development driver for the last 10 years. Yeah. So he knows how to pedal, and he's going to be introducing me to the world of downforce, which is cool. Um, but Miles, can we just, well, first of all, how excited are you for this? Well, you know, we've been talking about this for some weeks now, haven't we? Yeah. And it's only yeah. dawned on us kind of last week when we drove the car at yeah. Donington. Yeah. We are like, this is really this getting is really real. real. This is really yeah. getting real. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that Frank's designed the car for us, it's just, it's, it's mind just blowing. elevated it it totally. Mind blowing. So now you've had a bit more seat time in it than myself and you've driven some, you know, proper downforce cars. Sure. Is there anything that we can share? Because I find it really hard on camera. To, to, to convey what downforce is all about or the performance of this. Yeah, I mean, downforce is a really difficult thing to kind of, like you say, convey over, uh, over just basic words, if you will. You sort of run out of words to describe it. But yeah. it's only when you're really in the car that you feel it. And to put it, to, to give you some context, a Porsche 991 GT3 RS, for example, yes. that can corner a max at 1.2 G. And okay. that's not a slow car, is no, it? It's not that swift. Yeah. You've, dri you've yeah. driven a few Absolutely, of those. Yeah. That is not a slow car this can achieve 3G lateral corning force. So, do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's, it's, I it's mean, more than twice. Well, when I stepped out of this car on our test day the other day, and I'm not sure how many of these guys watched it, I was dripping. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, we've got no ABS, we've got no power steering. Um, the braking technique, this, this bleeding off as the aero comes off, off the car, sure. because we've got no ABS, if you've still got the same brake force as you did when you had full down force, yep. you can flat spot the tires. 100%, yeah, this is the thing. So where, where the, most of the deceleration is done is in the initial, initial braking where you've got all the aero. Mm. But then, as you say, the car actually doesn't have a huge amount of uh, what we call mechanical grip. Uh -huh. So when it's out of its aero window, you're basically relying on the four tires, you know. <laughs> yeah. So you have to, you have to totally, your brain is constantly adjusting to how the car's reacting, you know. And you can create a false limit. That's something like you, uh -huh. we're gonna have to work on with you over the year, yeah, yeah. is you can drive the car up to a certain speed and go, okay, I think the car's moving around now, that's the limit. Mm -hmm. But actually there's a bit it's more. Probably not. Yeah. So you have to step over that boundary, if you will, which isn't an easy thing, it's gonna take time. Yeah, I found from the, the early experience, there's this like no man's land where it's left the, mechanical grip and there's a very small window between mechanical and aero which yeah. I, I call it the no man's land and when we were doing testing at, at Johnny last year it was like minus two or something yeah. I found that no man's land uh -huh. <laughs> and this thing when it's just out of the aero window just like <laughs> swap swaps end so it's not like a GT car there's a degree of hustle in it mm -hmm. but it's a much more sort of smoother precise driving style isn't it it is very precise like you you know you've come from the Caterhams where mm. the fastest way of driving the car is, is having it moving around a little yeah. bit this if it's moving around it's kind of not doing its job you know, yep, yep. so that's a real going to be a, a shift change for you. And actually, if you remember the car last year, it, it wasn't all that friendly in every respect. I know we that's drove all. it in the winter, yeah, yeah. but we jumped in this on Thursday oh. and it was, it, it just came that's, to us, didn't the it? The smile that I had on Thursday was And you, honestly, were, dr you were dripping. I was dripping. <laughs> and because there's no power steering and under full load, the steering weight is pretty heavy. I came out with the claw because I was like gripping, gripping yeah. the wheel so tight. So on, on straights, I was taking the time to just like stretch it out a bit, but after 10 laps, I was dripping. Were you, were you pushing it in the corners? Yeah, barely. Yeah, there's some, some oh, neck work, and, uh, but I'm still very much beginning, the, I'm at the beginning phase of what this thing can do, yeah. Yeah. and even at that stage, I was like, I need to hit the gym. Yeah, well, well that's the consistency of lap after lap. <laughs> For sure. You start yeah. realizing Yeah, yeah, it. this oh. is it. Yeah, you can go out there and do you know your best lap ever, but if you can't do it for the half an hour, an hour yeah. you're in the car, it's yeah. kind of useless, yeah. you know? So, would I be right in saying this is kind of a baby LMP format? Is it yeah. like that? Yeah, I mean, you know, just from literally looking at the thing, it's not far off, is yeah, it? No. But what always, the, as you say, the camera doesn't always convey as well, is how small it is. It, it's a tiny little car. If you put this yeah. next to something like a GT car, yes. it looks My tiny, 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 tiny. But, you know, it's, it's GT3 quick. We had this conversation the we other day. We did, yeah. yeah. And I felt the need to say, when, he, when Miles says GT3 quick, it's not like, G, like Porsche GT3 RS. For sure. You mean category of race car, GT3, full slicks, exactly that. job. Exactly that. And, you know, you mentioned the fitness too. You know, we have to take that quite seriously this year because yeah. you, it, it's Brit car is endurance racing. You know, you're in the car for a long time. It gets hot in there and you're working hard. You know, yeah. um, we, we spoke after Thursday and we were both like, oh, shoulders are hurting a little <laughs> bit. Arms are hurting. <laughs> Tendons are hurting. When are the gyms going to open up? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. No, no, it's super, super cool. So, um, yeah, this is just 
the beginning, really. We, we felt because there's been so much effort uh, gone into this from Frank and Praga. Uh, we now have, have our team line up. Thankfully, I've got a man who knows how to drive with me. And uh, yeah, honestly, if you're in the UK, the restrictions are lifting midsummer. Come down to a track for Brit Car. Come and say hello. Come and check out the car. It would be a real shame that more people couldn't uh, appreciate Frank's work. And uh, also, I think, judging by the test day we had as well, there'll be some pretty cool cars there. So yeah, thanks very much. Welcome to the channel. Thanks, James. Let's Thanks, do it. <laughs>